Given this property, how would you answer these two questions? What functions can I call on the property? And what will those functions return? If your answer is either, I remember from when I declared the property, or I don't know, you've described the problem that TypeScript attempts to solve. This is Tom Does Tech, I'm Tom, and in this video, I'm going to show you just enough TypeScript for you to feel confident and productive using it. I said about two years ago to a colleague that I would never start a new project without TypeScript again. And so far, it's been true. Once I understood the power of TypeScript, I never looked back. I hope this video will be the turning point for you. Why should I learn TypeScript? You can catch errors in development. There's virtually no learning curve. It's just JavaScript with a little bit more syntax. You can document your code and improve to tooling. If none of this makes sense yet, don't worry. By the end of this video, you'll understand why TypeScript is so popular. The first thing you need to do to start using TypeScript in your project is to install TypeScript as a development dependency. So yarn add TypeScript dash D, or you can NPM install. The next thing we need to do is to create a tsconfig file. So create a new file in the root of your project called tsconfig.json and your editor and compiler will read this tsconfig file and compile your code as specified in here. So there's lots of options that you can put in here, but the main option that you'll need is compiler options. And then inside compiler options, we're going to specify an outdir. And as you would imagine, the out directory specifies where your TypeScript will be compiled to. So I'm going to put mine in a folder called dist. The second option that we're going to provide is our lib. And our lib is going to be an array. And lib will tell TypeScript that we want to include APIs from this specific version. And we can include multiple versions here. I'm going to set this to ES next and ES next is going to include all the APIs from ES next. And this will change as the JavaScript specification evolves. The third and final property that we're going to specify is ES module interop, and we're going to set this to true. So now that we have TypeScript installed and our TS config file defined, we can create a new file called app.ts and inside our app, we can specify a function and we can specify some props for this function. And just below our function, we can call our function and we can pass in some props. So to run this function, we will need to compile it. And to compile it, we'll use TSC. So come into package.json and create a scripts object. And inside scripts, I'm going to create one script called build. And this is going to run TSC. And this will build our application into our outdir that we defined. In this case, it's dist. And the second option that we're going to run is dev, and this is going to run our script. And to run our script, we're going to use TS node, and we're going to point it at our script. So in this case, app.ts. And so we also need to install TS node as a development dependency. So yarn add TS node. So now we can run yarn build, and we will get this disk directory. And you can see here that everything in this disk directory is going to be .js. And we can run this file now with node. And to run our app.ts, we can type yarn dev, and you can see that it run. So let's create an interface for our function inputs. So we'll call this interface inputs, and our inputs is going to have one property, and that's going to be name, and our name is going to be a string. So we can define this here with a full colon and then type input. Now, if we try to call our function with any other property in the object, it's going to give us an error. You can see here, Argument of type name string property boolean is not assignable to parameter of type input. Object literal may only specify known properties and property does not exist on type input. So these errors here can get quite lengthy and very difficult to read. The first part of the error is going to tell you what the interface received. And then the second part of the error is going to give you specifically. And the second part of the error is going to tell you which property specifically does not exist on the interface. So we can remove our offending property here and we can build our application again. And if we have a look at our out, you can see that our interface does not appear in the JS file. And that's because interfaces belong to TypeScript and cannot be interpreted by JavaScript. So the most fundamental part of TypeScript is going to be types and interfaces. Types and interfaces are very similar. The only difference is that you cannot extend a type. So I'm going to declare an interface. 
and I'm going to declare some properties on this interface. An interface represents the shape of something. So in this case, I'm going to represent the shape of an object. So I'm going to say property one is going to be a string. Property two is going to be a number and property three is going to be a Boolean. And I can make any one of these properties optional by providing a question mark here. So I can use my interface as the input for a function or I can use it as the output. So I can define a function and I can say input here is going to be my interface. And I can also say that the return type of this function is also going to be my interface. So you can see now that the function doesn't return anything. In fact, the function returns void. So we should see an error here that says void or any must return a value. So we can return our input here. And because our input has the same interface as our output and we're not modifying the contents here, it's going to satisfy TypeScript. So if our function doesn't return anything, we can specify the return type as void. If our function is an async function, we can specify our return type as a promise generic. And the promise generic is going to take my interface. And if we remove the async from this function, you can see that this is no longer valid because it no longer returns a promise. So we can extend interfaces. So I'll declare a second interface here. And I'll declare a fourth property on this interface that is going to be a string. And I can extend my interface. Now interface two includes all the properties from my interface, including its own property. So I can say here that this is going to take my input. And if we call this function here, we should get some helpers. So it's going to expect property one, which is optional, property four, which comes from interface two, property three from interface one and property two from interface one. If you want an interface to extend multiple interfaces, I'll copy this one down here and call this interface three. And I'll add a property called property five, which is going to be a Boolean. Then you can comma delimitate all the interfaces that this one extends. So my interface two will now include property five. You can declare types instead of interfaces. So you can say type my type equals, and then declare your object brackets. And I can say property one is going to be a string. And this will work the same as an interface. The difference is that you cannot extend types. So I can say my type two equals brackets and I cannot extend this interface. However, you can include my type into my type two by using the and symbol and it's going to be my type. So I can add property two here and this is going to be a Boolean and I can change this to my type and my type two. And when I call this function, you can see the input should take property one and property two. So the difference between types and interfaces is minimal. I usually stick to interfaces just for simplicity. The third option is enumerators. So enumerators are essentially JavaScript objects and they would define a list of properties. So I call this enum my enum and my enum is going to be enum one and enum one is going to be equal to a string of enum one. And I can do the same with enum two. And I can use my enumerator inside my type. So I can say, property three is going to be of type my enum. Now, when I go to call my function and I go to type property three, I can't just use any string here. I need to use enum one or enum two. So let's try this enum three. And you can see we have an error here. If I want to add my enum here, I can say my enum dot enum one. And like I said, enumerators are essentially JavaScript objects. So I can say object dot values. And I can pass my enumerator in here and I can call dot map. And this will convert my enumerator into an array of its values. Or you can use object dot keys and the key in this case is what is on the left hand side and the value is what is on the right hand side. So that's the basics of types and interfaces. The next thing we're going to look at is using TypeScript with libraries. So if I install any library, in this case, I'm going to use express. I can import express. And I can say const app equals express and I can execute that. And on our app, we have a type of any. And in TypeScript, if you want to opt out of the types, you can type anything as any. It's generally good practice to avoid using any because it doesn't provide any of the benefits that TypeScript provides. So this doesn't look right. App should have a type of express. And this means that express doesn't have its own set of types. It's made in JavaScript. So we can install the types from a mono repo called definitely typed. And to do that, you type yarn add, and it's going to be at types. And then the name of the library that you want to install the type from, 
and install your types as development dependencies. And you can see here now through a little bit of magic, our app has a type of express. So we should get all sorts of helpers now. And you can see that we have all these options that are available on the express interface. If you want to see what the express interface looks like, you can hold command or control and click the object. And now you can see the function declaration for express. And this is really handy when you're trying to see what a function does. And these comments here will appear when you hover over the function. You can see here creates an express application the express function is a top level function exported by express.module. So express is a third party library, but what about something that comes with the node standard library? So we can import crypto from crypto. And now we can say crypto dot, and you can see here, you get a bunch of suggestions for things that we can call on the crypto object. And again, you can command click into crypto and you can see here the module declaration. The next thing to talk about is generics. So a major part of building software is building functions that don't have well-defined APIs, but are still reusable. So given this function here, function my function, that takes an input and simply returns the input. And then if we use this function, const result equals my function, we want to be able to type result. In this case, it's any. And so we need to be able to type input but input can change. So input could be an array or input could be this object. So for this, we can use generics. So generics are defined with the greater than and less than symbol. And we can put our type here. And sometimes you'll see this abbreviated to just a T. And we can say that our input is going to be of type T. And we're going to return type of T. So you can see now that we get an interface on our result and we get an interface on our result too. So this is interesting because it's the same function, but it has different return results. And we can specify the input interface here manually if we need to. So in this case, it's going to take a name and that's going to be a string. Our function here is going to just take an array of strings. So generics are really powerful, especially when you're creating your own libraries. The next thing to talk about is utility functions. And there's a lot of utility functions, but I'm just going to talk about two of them. I'm going to talk about partial and emit. So we can define a new object and we can type this object as partial and partial is a generic and you'll recognize that from the greater than and less than symbols. And we can pass our interface into the partial generic and then we create an object. So you'll notice that TypeScript is not giving us any errors here. And that's because partial makes all of the properties in the interface optional. So you can see that in our interface, property one is not optional, but in this use case, property one is now optional because we're using partial. So we can create a new object called object two, and we're going to use emit. And again, emit is a generic, and I'm going to pass my interface in. And emit takes two arguments. The first argument is your interface. And the second argument is a list of strings that you would like to omit. So I'm going to say property three. And if you want to add a second property, use the pipe and you can add your second property. And now when we try use our interface, we can say property and you can see here, the only property that it will accept is property one because the other two have been omitted. So the last thing we need to talk about is how you structure your application now that you're using TypeScript. So you can see in these examples, we just have our types and enumerators defined in the file here. But the rule of thumb that I like to use is that if you're going to export your type or enumerator or interface, that you should put it in a new folder. And I like to call that folder types. And I would make a types file called something like user.types.ts. And this file here would be dedicated to exporting all the types required to build up the user interface. However, if the function is going to use the types, in this case, we don't export these types and they're just going to be used to declare the input and output for this function in this file, then it's fine to keep them in the file with the function. So that's the basics of TypeScript. If you would like to learn more advanced features of TypeScript, please let me know in the comments below. And if you would like to learn how to use TypeScript with React, please also let me know. Make sure you like the video and subscribe. And thank you for watching.